Welcome to Modern Musings, Conversations with the Maiden, Mother, and Crone, where we look at ourselves and the world through the lens of the 21st century. Hi, I'm your hostess, Cindy Murray, and I'm here with my fellow co-hosts, Amber Jones and Kristen Hessler. Hey. Hey. Did I do that right? <laughs> she was like blinking and she was like, oh, that sounds different. <laughs> I know. The last the last time I did it, hosted, I just said Amber because I was like, I'm not sure if I should call you Amber Jones yet or or if you're still doing Garvin or, um, you know, yeah. But it's kind of fun to hear it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> even even a month later, six weeks later, so it's uh, still pretty different. New. Yeah. <laughs> so we um we are you know it's it's kind of fun to talk about Amber being a newlywed and uh, we're entering into the season of love because we're coming up on Valentine's Day here in a couple of weeks. So, um. We just wanted to do a kind of in advance of Valentine's Day. And, and even for those of you who don't celebrate Valentine's Day, um, we're talking about date night ideas. And, you know, these don't have to be for Valentine's Day. They could be any time. And they could also be Galentine's yeah, ideas as dates. well. Yeah. So, um, you know, in or the... dates with yourself. R- and- right. But a couple of seasons ago, we, we actually, you know didn't talk about valentine's we talked about yeah. galentine's so um and we have a galentine's dinner every year now we do we then. do yeah. and it's a lot of fun um but this episode we're talking about date night ideas and um and you know i i'm a big proponent of date night um my husband mark and i have been doing a date night off and on for many 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 years uh, when we first got married, I uh, we were an instant family because I was a single mom, and I felt like it was important for us to have alone time, just Mark and me. And so we had a, a date night every Saturday night without Kristen. She went to my mother's house to visit, and so we could just have time to develop our marriage, and we just continued that for, um, for many years. And then, um, and, and one of the things that I did with that was I, I made him promise me that no matter how poor we were, that we could eat out on that night because I didn't want to have to cook. I didn't want him to have to cook. And, you know, it didn't matter to me if we just went to McDonald's and got a couple of kids hamburgers, you know, It was still going out and I wasn't having to do the work and we were together. So, um, we never had to stoop so low as to have the McDonald's hamburgers, but you know, we, we just kind of made that a thing with us and that was a promise that we made to each other. And then, you know, as we got, um, more established with our lives or whatever, more financially secure, you know, our dates became other things and it was, and we, we quit doing it every week. It eventually kind of became like once a month or whatever. And, um, we did quit doing it for a little while when our kids, when we got, our lives got really busy with the kids. But when my niece moved in with us, it was very clear that we still needed that alone time and we weren't getting it anymore because she lived here, you know, and we weren't, um, having alone time. So we, 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 reinstituted the date night and it sometimes it's just a matter of going out to dinner and you know just being out alone and being able to talk about couples things without you know someone else being there so um, I know Amber has a whole list uh, we've talked about it on our bucket list about Mm -hmm. date night ideas I've actually kind of compiled a few date night ideas too but uh, I'd like to hear yours. I'd like to hear um, some of the things that you and Jason might do on a date night or that you have on your bucket list to do on a date night. Okay. I mean, a lot of our date nights, like y'all's, um, consist of trying new restaurants. Mm-hmm. One thing that we like to do is um, send each other either Instagram reels or TikToks of like a different 
date night ideas or Ooh. different restaurant ideas. And uh-huh. then that way it's saved like in our... Oh, so you can so remember them, yeah. We found, uh, recently we found a really cute little place in Fort Worth in the Magnolia area called Lily's Bistro. Okay. And on Saturday they have like uh, some kind of music there. Mm-hmm. And so we went and um, it was very, like a lot of people liked it. It was hard to find a table, but we sat at the bar and they have like these famous donuts that we shared and we listened to the live music and we ate dinner and Mm -hmm. it was really, and it was really neat. It was like a neat little hole in the wall place Mm -hmm. that we ran across on TikTok, which is probably not hole in the wall anymore. Right. Um, And then like in that same area and we really enjoyed that area. So we go back every now and then, like, uh, we went to, the last time we went over to that area, we went to the Yucatan taco stand. Okay. And I think I told you all about that, uh, that we had Yucatan tacos and it was really great. Probably some of the best quesadillas, cause I always have to get a quesadilla uh-huh. that, um, I've had at least in the Fort Worth area. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, we also, sorry, we also like to go to the theater. That's like mm-hmm. one of our, either the movie theater or go and see like a Casa Manana theater, Shakespeare in the Park. Shakespeare in the Park is one of our big things that we do. And we also like to see the random obscure museums in this oh, yeah. area okay we uh recently um went to the samurai museum in downtown dallas i didn't oh, even cool. know that exists yeah oh and, wait is that the tremel crow museum yes oh yes. okay okay yeah that one it's yeah it's, yeah, it's Small, not just yeah, a, it's, yeah it's, it's not a, just samurai it's a uh, actual asian yeah asian yeah. culture and yeah. they have like yeah, a whole section of samurai they do have yeah, a whole section of samurai uh, up yeah. over like the saint anne bar and then there is like a little walk that you can do through downtown dallas to see all of those other Asian displays. Did you know that? Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, there's a little, like, a you get the pamphlet and you can just, like, walk and see all oh. of the art displays. I might in have that to area. get Mark to go do that one. That would, he would, yeah, enjoy that, that was, that was really cool because Jason really likes Asian culture. Mm-hmm. And so we checked that out. And then Jason had never heard of Kune Kunyai. Is that Kino Kuna. Kino, Kino Kunia. Kino Kunia. Kunia, yeah. And uh, we went on a we went on a date night to the revolving sushi bar. Oh yeah, uh-huh. out here in Carrollton, and we went and we bought a book at the bookstore okay. over there. Yeah, and then we went down and uh, walked through the little grocery store mm-hmm. that's over there and got some Asian groceries, Asian treats, and that was our date. That's that's a fun one. Uh, Mark yeah. and I do some some things like that too. Um, one of the things that we love to do is to go like downtown or uptown or wherever, and and go see. Particularly in the arts district, um, there's a lot of little pop up art galleries, and we mm-hmm. like to go uh, look at or participate in interactive art exhibits. And so there's like the Sweet Tooth Hotel and several yeah, other that's little. that's on my bucket list. Yeah, there's a several and little the things there. Wolf is on my bucket list. And, um, and so we like to go do those things. We'll go have dinner and we'll go to the exhibit and we'll walk around. Mm-hmm. And we there's do that. another one called Rainbow Vomit that's mm-hmm. around here too that I want to check out. Yeah, we went to one um, in Pegasus Square, I think is where it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, there was an interactive exhibit, uh, there we, we rode the train down to downtown and went there. This, this is an area right around the corner from Amber school. So she knows yeah, exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's right and, near my um, work. There was a, there was an artist who was, uh, doing visual things and it was a story, um, uh, being read with this video, uh, you know, and it, they were 
displaying it. They were shooting it on the wall of the building of this high rise, you know, and, um, and you just kind of walk around and, and, and watch it. And there's some other art in mm-hmm. that little area as well. It's a, it's a neat little plaza. Yeah. And, um, when we got through with that exhibit, cause it was, it was a, maybe a 20 or 30 minute program and then it repeated. Mm-hmm. So, um, we happened to glance down the street and we could see some bright neon lights. So the we just, AD, the AT&T discovery it was the, district, the yeah. discovery gardens. And so we walked down there to see what it was. And we're amazed that you can walk in. There's all kinds of art exhibits there. Um, it's a whole open air little garden thing uh-huh. with some food and, um, and bars and there's some interactive exhibits out in the courtyard. And then you can actually walk into the AT&T building. And, there and the bottom more, floor yeah. is is an art museum. And they had a lot of stuff on display. And that was, there was some video art going on. There's um, uh, fine art thing. You know, there was photography. Mm. There was some paintings. And, and yeah, so we had a grand old time just walking around downtown um, yeah, you there know, are a lot of neat things. There's to a see. lot of neat things downtown, and so, and we've done a, a lot of those. So and the tunnels as well, yep. and everything. Uh, another good thing to do, like um, on Thursday nights, the Perot Museum has like an adult date night. Oh, and they have food trucks, oh, and that's cool. you can get a beverage and walk through the Perot Museum mm-hmm. just adults and. Right play with all the exhibits without a million kids kids. there yeah yeah Yeah, that's kind of cool because yeah sometimes thursdays on tap but uh, and then they uh jason and i actually went to that when it was teacher night oh okay so it was like a a bunch of teachers i have not been to the perot it's been on my bucket list um, yeah, it's on our family. It was on our family list, bucket but list, but we had happen. to cancel because uh, I don't remember. Dad what. wasn't feeling good that day. Oh no, he had he was waiting for a call from the doctor, and they hadn't called him back or something. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it was a it was a long whole drawn out thing, but um, we did. Uh, I was trying to think there the Clyde Warren Park. I've always wanted to go down there and have like a little picnic. Oh in yeah, and they have and, a food truck days mm-hmm. as well, and. And Pacific Plaza also has, especially in the summer, they have food truck festivals and live music. Oh, and and the Nasher Sculpture Center also has music, like in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Midnight at the Nasher or something. And Central Market as well, like on the weekend, Uh has music. Because I have a co-worker that oh, yeah. play, that goes around, he has a band, and they go around and play different locations, uh-huh. and Central Market is one of them okay. that they play at. Yeah. Well, and, Mark, and Bishop Arts, they yeah. have like a place that they play in Bishop Arts, There's which is another, antiquing in Bishop Arts is a really right. like a awesome date night thing, or just going down to Bishop Arts and just walking mm-hmm. around. Yeah, is really cool. Um, we like the arcades, like the free play yeah. arcades yeah. and stuff. Those are a lot of fun. Um, Dave and Buster's yeah. free play. Oh, we um, like free play because it's a lot cheaper. It's than a lot Dave cheaper than Dave and Buster's, and there's not kids in there. It's a it's a bar. Yeah, so, and out after a certain. No, I'm thinking of Cidercade. Have you been to Cidercade? I've, we've no. been to the Cidercade. Yeah, as well, like yeah. A, after, after a certain time, the kids have to leave the Cidercade, and then they mm-hmm. have some really awesome pizza there, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, and there's, there's a really neat bowling alley in the Clear Fork area of Fort Worth called Pinstripes. Uh-huh. And it's like an Italian bistro restaurant, and it's also a bowling alley. Oh, so how you fun. Eat I love like bowling. Like Italian bistro and bowl. And bowling is funny. so much fun. Yeah. Because it's a great date night. There's a bowling alley by our house that's a movie theater. You told me about that? So you yes. get to watch a movie and bowl uh, at the same time. That's on my bucket time. list. Bucky list. That's no, I, my do, bucket list. I do. I do. <laughs> Chicky list. Nuggies on my bucket list. Go to Bucky's. Bucky's. Bucky's Chicky Nuggie a... on my Bucky. Um... I, I like going to the movies. Um, we like to go to concerts. You know, sometimes there'll be a concert. We just mm-hmm. uh, last fall had a date night to go see Peter Gabriel, and I that was awesome and phenomenal. Um, 
but we like to go see, you know, Mark is a musician, so he's often involved in some of the uh, ambient music community and stuff like that. And so we'll go uh, watch those performances and um, like, we like art. We like mm. music. We like movies. Um there's arboretum so we talked about that, like that on the podcast on the, like yes. yeah the arboretum um the botanical yeah. gardens saw a lot of major oh, oh yeah in fort worth the botan- areas have I love fort worth the has a beautiful gardens. botanical garden and um, the zoos are fun you know yeah that's also on my bucket list i have not been to either of the zoos oh they're great they're really great in this area yeah there's some great zoos here there's one in fort worth and one in dallas so i can't even remember like um i think the last time i was at a zoo was in high school and that was the washing the one in washington Mm dc yeah we i i like the things like that um sometimes our dates are staycation dates you know too um you know sometimes we'll just do let's stay in and watch a movie and you know order some mm-hmm. pizza and make some popcorn and or play a play a game or play some video games together i i really feel like um well it's good in your young young years of your marriage because you need that time together to learn and to grow and to really meld as a couple um you enter a lot of times you're you're your interactions are functional interactions where you're paying the bills, cleaning the house, Mm -hmm. you know, things like that, getting ready for work, cooking dinner. And so you need those relaxed times when your attention is really Mm -hmm. on each other and not in a romantic, I mean, it is a romantic thing, but not in a sexual way, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Where you're, where you're intellectually connecting with each other, doing mm-hmm. things together. And and I think that's really important in the early years of your marriage, but it's also really important um, when you're raising children because that then so much of your time is involved in the, the raising of your family and, and you need that alone time without the kids. And then once the kids are grown, it's important to reconnect again and and bring back that kind of spark and that closeness that you had when you were younger um your as your relationship changes the need for those um one-on-one interactions changes what you get out of it changes but it's still the same it's you still need it and um i like i say i think every couple should have an, at least an occasional date night because it I think it's really important to your relationship. And uh, Kristen, do you guys do a date night? Yeah. Uh, we haven't been able to do one in a while because I'm like never home. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, and That's another good reason to set aside the time to do right. one. Right. Well, and we kind of like started going to the gym together. Right. Well, but- that can be a date yeah as well in a way Eh. i mean it depends i kind of started taking gym classes and he likes to just do his own thing so we don't really spend time at the gym together right we're just like hey i see you over there you know Mm -hmm. but um you know that was actually one of travis's goals that uh he wanted to incorporate more into that but he's having a hard time like knowing like where to start but i'm like it's not my goal it's his. He right. needs. I'm not going to do it for him. Right. So I've been kind of just like stepping back and letting him, you know, <laughs> figure it out. Right. Um, Because I can't do everything for him. I right. can't be the one that, you know, makes everything happen in the relationship, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and it's his goal. So um, I told him, you know, okay. That you said you want to do more date nights. Next step. What's your next step? And and uh, he's kind of like simmering on that. Right. Because I think he doesn't know what to do next. But I'm like, mm, you need a list of ideas, you know. Right, right. So, <laughs> you know, I'll probably, I've been writing down some of the ones that Amber said that uh, sounded intriguing. Mm-hmm. 
um, to just maybe give him a starting point. Right. But um, last one that we did, we stood in line forever at Top Golf. Oh yeah. And then they came out and said they weren't taking any more. Oh god. Yeah. So then it was like, ugh. So we ended up, I don't even remember what we did. Because we spent like an hour standing outside waiting. Because we were like, it's cool, whatever. And then um, we were going to eat dinner there. And they wouldn't even let us go in the restaurant and eat. Ugh. They were so full or whatever. Yeah. So we ended up just going um, out to eat at a restaurant. And I think we were just like, let's just go home and watch Netflix. So yeah. sometimes that's our thing. Because yeah. Travis tends to fall asleep watching TV so if we make a commitment, like we're going to watch this, then he will, you know, try to stay awake. So we've been enjoying like watching like one or two episodes every now and then because, uh -huh. I mean, we're two ships passing in the night a lot of times. Oh, yeah, because so sometimes he works we late nights. get or, a couple yeah. of hours, you know, of time where we're both awake and not doing work or family or home stuff. So um, hopefully this year we'll be able to add a couple more things in problem is we don't necessarily like the same kind of stuff yeah. when it comes to um you know like you said the rainbow barf place or whatever rainbow vomit, vomit yeah. yeah whatever like i'm like that just doesn't sound like something he would be interested in um and the museums i don't necessarily think he enjoys much looking at like paintings and stuff but he likes other museums like he loves world war ii museums and i'm like uh, like, you right. know, they're good and interesting, but, you know, there's only so many different airplanes I can take a look at. Because we've been, we've been to, like, a World War World War II um, air, museum, air museum, whatever. Yeah. It was, like, any kind of thing that flew in the air. They had, like, so many different airplanes. And we went in, like, all these different hangars, and it was just like, okay. Oh I'm gosh! About, you know, Jason does like that. Yeah, stuff too. I'm like, this is about as much as I can I can do. You know. Yeah. We went to amazing World War II museum in Louisiana, mm -hmm. in in New Orleans. Yep. Uh, that one was was great, and I do love museums, but um, you know, I like other history museums mm -hmm. as well and natural science museums. So I think there's like a balance. We have to kind of like take turns. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I wouldn't make him go to a bunch of uh, art museums you know right right and then sometimes we just go fishing yeah because that's, that's great, fun well and you know we we go we've There's taken wrong like with that. day yeah. trips day day dates you know we'll mm -hmm. we'll drive to a nearby state park and just go hiking yeah uh or walking or whatever and just mm -hmm. kind of explore the little park and um you know, taking a drive to go somewhere and then drive back. Yeah. We'll, we'll take a little snack or a picnic or something. And that's a lot of fun. We like that. We take the dog with us because she likes to walk and hike. And, um, you know, we've, we've done that in the past. Um, there's, there's a lot of things, just depending on what you like to do. You know, we went, uh, one year for our anniversary. Um, we just got on the train and went to Uptown. And just walked around. I mean, we just, we walked around and we went and had lunch or dinner at the Village Burger Bar. And then we went and had uh, coffee at the Starbucks. And we just, we just walked around and looked at what was there, you know. And it was, it was just kind of fun. Um, just being together somewhere doing something, you know geocaching we've done geocaching before together um bike riding mm -hmm. so yeah a lot of times you just trying new restaurants yeah, yeah. that's what i yeah. like to do we do a that a lot too like, yeah uh, just trying new restaurants and um like a uh, Or just going and exploring, uh, doing something cute in a city that you don't always go right to, mm -hmm. like McKinney. Like I never make it up to McKinney, but I did that by myself the other day. Like uh, 
I uh, was in McKinney because of Kristen. So I, I took myself on a day date. Mm -hmm. And I went to my favorite little store. I went to Mellow Mushroom. And I went to my favorite little coffee shop off mm -hmm. the square. Uh, you know, cool. one year I, I took Mark to go get pedicures together. That was our date. And he had never had a pedicure and he was like, this is the most amazing thing ever. He had had a bike ride earlier in the day and his legs were kind of achy. And he got that massage and the hot whirlpool, you know, and everything. And he was like, wow, this is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and now I know why you like to go get your pedicures, you know. Uh, Y'all uh, should go to Spa Castle. Right. Date uh, night. Or couples massage, you know, yeah. massage mm -hmm. envy or something where mm -hmm. they just have you. You're just in a in a room together and, you know, two different masseuses. And um, masseuses, is that the proper Masusai. No, no, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what the plural is. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, there's there's a lot of things even like that that are kind of nice. Um, Do you guys, um, well, you were talking about geocaching. Amber, have you ever played Pokemon Go? Oh, that would be fun. Oh, I want to do that. Jason plays it all the time, but no, I think I played it when it first came out. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I was living in Vernon, so there wasn't a lot of Pokemon to catch oh, in Vernon. Yeah. Now there's like little areas around Fort Worth that are tagged for Pokemon Go and yeah. downtown Dallas. Yeah. They have like a people will get together and just go catch Pokemon in downtown Dallas and yeah. stuff like that, like have events. Mm -hmm. I went, um, it, it made me think of that, the geocaching, because this wasn't the date. It was, um, I guess it was like a girlfriend's date. One of my old co-workers moved out of town, and so she would come every year right before Christmas, and we'd go to North Park Mall and watch a movie and have dinner together. And so we walked around the mall, and I would, you know, get some Christmas shopping in, too, while I was there. Mm -hmm. Might as well. I mean, if you're going to drag me to the mall in December, might as well Christmas shop. And um, <laughs> we played Pokemon Go in the mall there oh, at North Park Mall. Yeah, yeah, and that was really fun. And I... Travis has been talking about playing it. He's never played it before, but his brother, I think, plays it. Uh -huh. And um, I was like, that'd be fun. We could go around town and play Pokemon. Yeah, yeah like they have, yeah, events yeah. that you can go. Like there's one in Clyde and Warren Park occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, I have a co-worker friend that goes and does that. There's also, um, along those lines, there's a thing... Um, and I don't know if you guys remember this, but when Kristen, when we went to Vegas for Kristen's bachelorette trip. Oh yeah. The clued up games. The, yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah, they're, they're like uh, scavenger hunt kind of things and you sign up online and they send this stuff to your phone and you just, it's a, like a guided tour through, through the town or whatever. Um, sometimes there are also VR virtual reality um, hikes and stuff that you can do in, uh, I know, uh, um, Plano had one like about a year or two ago that was an Alice in Wonderland theme and you were, uh -huh. it was like a VR thing and you were Im immersed in Alice still, in Wonderland. Um, yeah. yeah. They still have, I want to say the Alice in Wonderland one's coming back because they still have those. And there's a really awesome app that you can get on your phone called Fever. Mm. And um, that's how I found out about the Edgar Allan Poe night. Uh, and then Fever. there. And what then is it? It's, it's just like an app with events oh, that okay. you can do. Sponsored or unsponsored ev events that you can get tickets for these things that's how I got tickets to the Edgar Allan Poe night that Jason and I went to and then um back like a like a all through the um I guess fall last fall they were doing like a Harry Potter Hogwarts mm. forest up in um the call not the colony um Little Elm okay in like a one of the and it was like a Harry Potter immersive experience. Uh -huh. Yeah, those immersive um, exhibits and games and stuff like that are a lot of, uh, they're really popular right now. And they're, um, 
they're interactive and yeah, those are kind of cool. Yeah, I was just going to look and so I've kept this Fever, Fever, Fever app on my phone and it like gives you events that's going on in the area. They also have these things on there called candlelight experiences and then they also offer dining in the dark experiences. I've always wanted to do that. Uh Uh-huh. And then they Those also really cool. offer like a music experiences, like classical I've seen music those. and yeah. stuff like that. And uh, and there's also the the um, mystery th- mystery dinners that you can go oh, do. Oh, the as murder well. mystery dinners. Yeah, those. Yeah, those oh, look I want to do cool. the one in oh. Fort Worth. Yes, and there's one in Grapevine, the Texas Star Theater. Oh, that's what it is. I always mm-hmm. get those. <laughs> I feel like I'm in Fort Worth when we go to Grapevine. Because, because it's, it's Western, a, yeah, yeah, Western yeah. Little square, yeah, the, yeah, the Texas Star Theater is really cool. Mm-hmm. And then there's like a, there's a cute little um, theater. I, I think it's either in Addison or Plano. It's called Pocket Sandwich Theater. I think that's Addison. Addison, yeah. And it's like a, a dinner theater mm-hmm. thing there. And they always have like interesting shows. Like in October, they had dracula and oh cool like a interesting immersive Mm -hmm. shows that's on my bucket list to go see there and Mm -hmm. then the texas star theater is on my bucket list for sure and then like uh gosh what else there's like so so many many things things. there's there's so many things that are on my bucket list (laughs) that uh the dating bucket list oh yeah yeah well and um you know, like we've talked about all the different um, theaters and stuff, but there's also um, like the Wax Museum, the Stockyards in Fort oh, Worth. Oh, yeah, and then there's some museums out in the Stockyards as well, right. and then a rodeo, cattle drive, mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff. All kinds of things all going kinds of on. Things. And you know what? I've lived out there for a while, and I have yet to go out to the Stockyards. Really? Yeah, I guess because I live near it. I've lived in the Dallas area for how many years now? And, you know, 20, 25 years. And Mm. I've never been to the stockyards either, so. Never? No. The last time I went was probably about 15 years ago. But, well, I've been out, um, I've been like close to the Mm -hmm. stockyards, like the water gardens and stuff like Uh that recently but like uh i haven't been i do like the water gardens that's yeah, kind of cool i haven't been out to the stockyards they used to have a couple of like restaurants out there that i really mm-hmm. liked but so maybe i should go back out there and check it out like uh they have a lot of cute things and downtown grapevine as well which is you know kind of like the stockyards but without um without the cattle <laughs> yeah without the cattle drive <laughs> yeah for sure and that's also one of my favorite places to go and walk around, especially around Christmas time. Oh, because yeah. They, they have, have all, all of the interactive. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the little obscure bookstores around oh, yeah. DFW, especially if you like books. And Jason had never been to the flagship flagship half price books oh yeah so yeah. it was oh, a treat to one. take him yeah. there because he had never been there and since he's been with me like one of his goals has been to read more so uh-huh. he's been buying books and reading books since we've been together and i take him to bookstores so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, bookstores. I love me some bookstores. I like um, game stores, too, like going to a board game oh, store. Have you been to the one in Bishop Arts? I have not. That um, is the cutest board game store but, in Bishop Arts. But going there and, you know, sometimes they have live games going on that you can mm-hmm. get in on. Or you can buy a new game and bring it home and have a, a date night of playing games. I love playing games. So um, that's one of my favorite things i just love it so there's one that they just opened in downtown mckinney also and it's mm-hmm. like a two-story game store oh, wow and um well and there's the dallas gamers marathon which is in plano which is uh it's not a store it's mm-hmm. uh it's like a 
a gamer board gamers club. It's a club though. It's not like a place you could just walk in and just well, start playing games. I don't know. I th- I don't know if you have to pay membership. I think you just pay to come play. Um, but you're there's always people there playing games, and you can just come and join in on a game. and And they have tons of games that, or you can bring your own games and start up a game mm-hmm. with somebody. And um, that one's a really fun one too. Coffee dates are always good too. I love a good coffee and dessert date. Um, seems like a lot of the the places though that where you used to be able to go get a dessert are gone. Um, one of my favorites used to be the like Cafe Brazil mm-hmm. because they always had a big um, display of all their cheesecakes and desserts and stuff, and you could go in and have a specialty coffee and a dessert. You can still do that at like La Madeline or um, there's a little place. Mm. Down... Emporium Pies. Um... There's there's a place in Addison. I can't remember what it's called. Um, I, I can't remember what a it's called. A lot of the cute little coffee places will have neat desserts. Yeah, yeah. Now. But some of those, a lot of those closed during COVID. And so it's mm-hmm. kind of, it's kind of a little more challenging. Yeah. But those are those are fun. I like doing those on a date night as well. I think, uh, yeah, uh, Jason and I, one of the last date nights that we went on, we went to Barnes & Noble, mm-hmm. and we both bought a book, uh-huh. and we went into their little cafe section, uh-huh. and we got we each got like a big cookie and uh-huh. a drink, and we sat, sat down and looked at our books. <laughs> um, I have a friend who likes to go to those paint, like painting with a twist nights, but they mm-hmm. have, a, they have like date night or couples night. And so a lot of times it'll be like, a, okay, I don't know what it's called. A triptych is with three panels. What is it if it's a double panel, Kristen? A diptych? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. My art friends are all be going, oh my God. No. I'm like a dipstick. I didn't say dipstick. I know. But but yeah, anyway, so they'll it'll be a two two panel artwork and one uh-huh. one will paint one and one will paint the other half of it. Um and that that's supposed to be a fun and you were talking about the glass blowing yeah. classes. Well there's and a place like also cooking in, classes in this area that you can go and make your own rug. Oh wow. And so that's like a date night type thing. Uh-huh. Like you can go and make a rug. Seems like that would take longer than one night. No, it's it's really like I saw videos of it. Like uh-huh. you just like yeah, it's just like a they have the pan they set the panel up for you and you uh-huh. get the shape and the colors that you want and you just like do it like using yeah. a machine. Oh, I've oh, seen I've those seen uh, hook rugs with the machine. Gun. Yeah, it's a yeah. tufting. Tufting yeah. is what they call it. Yeah. yeah, so you can go and make your own rug yeah, like a date night cool. rugs, and then there's one where you can. Go and make your own like a uh, resin cups. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, there's so many of those kind of makers movement type things mm-hmm. that are that are out now. Woodworking projects and and other things like that. Yeah, I think those would be. We a lot want of fun. to do all of them. We love doing stuff like yeah. that together. If you like that, then you need to go to AR Workshop. They do um, basically like the vinyl. Oh. And the painting on yeah, wood stuff. Yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. can make like a sign or whatever. You uh-huh. can both make your own thing, like something different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, another a, a friend of mine that does that the painting classes. They also subscribe to. I I can't remember what it's called. A date box. I think I'll have to verify that. Um, and and put that on the on the heard it on the podcast, but um. It's you subscribe to this box and it's got this book and it and it tells you you just turn to a you turn to a page or whatever it is and it tells you this this date will take two hours and you need this and this or whatever. And you don't know exactly what you're doing until you actually open it up and look and see what the date is. But um but you're then you're committed to do it. You have to do whatever it says it is, and it's sometimes it's like baking cookies together, or or going on an adventure and going checking something out. But it's um, she's enjoyed those a lot. Um, I need to look at those because they look like a lot of fun. 
So um, I'm, I'm interested to see if our uh, any of our listeners have any good ideas. I know I had, at one point in time, a whole list of fun things to do for dates. And I somehow I've lost it, so I don't know where it went. But um, I'd like to hear what kinds of things you think would be fun to do on a date, whether it's a first date or a 52 first dates or whatever it is, you know, mm-hmm. 50 first dates. Um, you know, I know I that's like that the saddest movie I ever. <laughs> I know. But, um, but you know, whether you're, you've been married 50 years or 50 days or you're just dating for 50 days, let's, I'd like to hear what kind of dates you might go on. Um, or which ones you thought would work and didn't. That would be interesting to know too. Oh, worst date! I can tell you that one time this oh, guy, I know this exactly guy what and you're I talking went about. to go see a movie, and we went to go see The Grudge, and he fell asleep in the movie. And then the movie was over, and it was like, <laughs> do I just leave him there? <laughs> did you wake him up? <laughs> yeah, I did. I was oh, nice. I woke him up. Yeah. Yeah. I think I um movie is the worst idea for a first date. Oh, well, sure. it depends on what the movie is. I I don't know. Uh my husband and I went on a movie for our first date and we went to go see Platoon Platoon Leader or Platoon. It was Platoon, platoon not leader. Platoon Leader. That's one <laughs> that is a movie. Um but oh. we went to go see a Platoon. I almost said Full Metal Jacket, but we watched that one later. Um but yeah. <laughs> what a first date right right (laughs) and i married him so i don't know you know um it was a good movie it was a good movie but um i think that was his test will she tolerate this stuff i don't know the (laughs) the year that the movie looper came out i went on two different dates to Um, see looper the same movie wow the same movie two different guys and then like i had also already seen the movie anyway with my Uh, friend hallie (laughs) so in same place for all of those dates which is the movie tavern or not the movie tavern the studio movie grill in louisville Uh i actually saw top gun as a date with a guy that i only dated that one time he was in the air force yeah 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 (laughs) he turned out to be kind of weird yeah i would say one of the worst i wouldn't say it's the worst date but one of the worst date one of the most memorable weird dates that i went on is that this guy asked me out for coffee and he asked me and it was kind of an expensive coffee place at the time in denton and i think i had like maybe ten dollars to my name because i was in college And I don't think I had a job at that time. So I'm like, okay. And it was an expensive place. Like you couldn't get out of there for like under $15 or whatever. So he asked me out to the, for this coffee and we met up there and, and then he's all like, oh, we, we should get, you know, uh, let's order some food or whatever. And so I'm like, this is going, (laughs) yeah. And I'm like, um, hmm. Because the coffee was already like $5 or whatever. And uh, maybe I had like $20 to my name. Or anyway, it was my last $20 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so the coffee was already like $5. And so I ordered like, I guess, like a $10, $12 salad. Because it was like one of the cheapest things on the menu. And I was like... And, I, you know, I was under the impression that like, he asked to order food, that he was going to pay for my food. Right. Not the case. Yeah. Not the case. Like, uh, we we uh, we get the bill, and he looks at it, because it was an expensive place, and he said, oh, uh, we need separate checks. And I'm like, Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. okay. See, like, and I think that, uh, as far as dating, yeah. that, I mean, it used to be... Um, an unwritten thing that the guy paid for it. But, mm. you know, I, I don't think that's necessarily always the case anymore um, because a lot of women don't want guys to well, pay I mean, for like it. He asked I to think get it's food. I, I so think I it's whoever that. invites out is the one well, who yeah, has to pay he, for it. I think he invited when we me were out dating, and then he was all like, let's get food. Right. You know? When we were dating, though, that was the transition of women being able to pay for their pay own them, meals um, yeah. and not expect men to pay right. for them. But and it that should men didn't be... Need, didn't, 
because I think you know it's kind of unfair for men to always have to. Oh, it take absolutely that burden, right. Absolutely, and so it was probably fine, and, finally nice. And it for wasn't them to nice for to. women either because then men expected something if they bought you dinner or whatever, right. you know. And well, it's like, uh, no. But so I, that's why I think if it's if you are the inviter, you're the person who invites. You should be the one to foot the bill because you well, are yeah. inviting them. I think now people are just more clear that well, and, it's or on be clear me. about it. Yeah. Well, I you know, I didn't mind paying for myself, but like uh if it I It would had, be good to know that ahead yeah, of time. If I had known that I was gonna have to pay for myself, then I would have just been like, um I'm not hungry right now. Yeah, I'm yeah. not hungry because it was my last money that right. I had. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's definitely not cool to go into that situation like without enough, without some clear boundaries. Yeah, of I what, had enough what money the expectations for a coffee are. date, but not yeah. enough money for an expensive dinner date because right. that place had expensive food. Right. So that yeah, I think it's I think regardless of what kind of date it is, um, there should be clear expectations of what is expected because, um, you know, some people. Don't even kiss on the first date. So, you know, their boundaries are important and it's, it's mm -hmm. good to be clear about your boundaries. And, um, even with your married husband, even you with your married husband. Dates, yes. No phones, no games. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think so. It, you know, no we're going to go on a date. We're not going to work. We're not going to talk on the phone. Yeah. Um, we're going to spend it with together. each other. Yeah. Together. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, I'd like to hear uh, what our listeners think about date nights. And um, we've got some more uh, great topics coming up in the future. I think next week, Amber. Yes, uh, I'm going to be talking about National Inventors Day. Okay. It's up, so we're going to talk about some cool inventions that's not chat tpt just kidding okay some cool inventions <laughs> that have been invented right national right. inventors day I'm, I'm anxious to see what where that goes <laughs> yeah so okay well um we'll be back next week but in the meantime give us a good uh rating give us give us a shout you know tell us what you think Give us some reviews. Go send us some love on Facebook and Instagram and wherever we are. Um, we want to know that you're listening. And that's the, that's how we know that you're listening is when you give us those ratings, when you give us those reviews and, um, and you give us those likes and subscribe. So go ahead and go do that. Join us on our MMC chat, Facebook group, and um, we'll be back next week with National Inventors Day. Bye. Bye.